Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulin kareem. This is the introduction to what will inshallah be a kind of an ongoing series um, that we are, I am calling uh, an atheist journey to Islam. Uh, the Quran, Allah tells us in Surah Al Imran, Ayah 19, in Nadina, in the Lahil al Islam, which roughly translated uh, is indeed the religion with Allah is Islam. So that's kind of kind of the premise, the whole purpose of of the talk long term. Um, I have a few personal goals with this. First is to tell my story, my personal story of my journey to Islam, both for my own benefit, inshallah, we are supposed to reflect um, and, you know, learn the lessons that Allah has sent to us. Um, and also for anyone else who might benefit from it, inshallah. Second would be to introduce Islam to other people coming from a similar background as an atheist, perhaps an agnostic, just a anyone out there who is not currently a Muslim, but uh, who might gain from this. And finally, to introduce atheists to the Ummah. Um, I know I found early on that there were a lot of misconceptions, a lot of specific prejudice in uh, Dawah, particularly um, when it comes to the, the topic of atheists. Um, and that the Dawah can be kind of patronizing and presumptive and therefore infective. So I felt like uh, if you want something done right, sometimes you have to do it yourself. So inshallah, we can all benefit from this. Um, now my journey to Islam came in stages. It was not just kind of an aha moment. Um, it wasn't as long as some, but um, I kind of think of it as stage one, which is what we'll be beginning to address tonight, was sort of a superficial, superficial stage where I initially kind of opened my mind and my heart a bit to Islam, um, more as a culture at the time, um, to introduce myself more properly. My name is Catherine. I am the uh, coordinator and the public relations director for the Islamic Outreach Center of Colorado. Obviously, we are currently home doing these videos. Our center is locked for now. Inshallah, it won't be for too long. Um, but the benefit of that is we've been able to find a little more time to start building our, our online presence for people to access us virtually. Inshallah, services continue. Um, I am originally from Texas. Uh, my upbringing was, uh, my mother is a Catholic, still considers herself a Catholic. My dad, I don't recall ever discussing anything the way religion with before he died when I was in my early 20s. Um, I have considered, I considered myself an atheist from before I knew that there was a word for it. Um, finding the label felt very good at the time. But um, I was kind of a precocious, maybe obnoxious, very questioning child. Um, I really wanted everything in the world, and I still do, uh, wanted everything in the world to make sense, to have a reason, to have a purpose, to have logic behind it. And I was continuously disappointed with the religions I was exposed to um, in that regard. <laughs> I... Um, I spent a lot of time in atheist and agnostic circles, um, in person and on MySpace. Maybe I'm dating myself there. Um, as well as feminist, at the time, liberal feminist circles. Um, and I kind of thought by, you know, high school, later high school, early 20s, that I had found, you know, my people, uh, people of the same mind. And uh, we could kind of see eye to eye on most everything. And um, I ran into kind of a glaring blind spot in this community that kind of surprised, surprised me um, when the conversation of hijab arose one day. I don't remember how it came up. We typically harass Christians <laughs> in the atheist group. 
uh, and the feminist group as well, just because it was, you know, that's kind of the norm. If you're a white English speaking North American, um, you're more likely to be interacting with a Christian than any other demographic, um, or at least it has been. We don't know how long it will stay that way. Um, so when the topic of hijab came up, it just kind of the vitriol that I saw from, from these people that I thought I was kind of on the same level with really shocked me. Um, I had thought of us, kind of this community, as very open-minded, very progressive, um, generally pretty accepting of other viewpoints as long as they weren't damaging to anyone. And so I just couldn't uh, get my head around why this you know, this group of women who decided to put on more clothes was so bothersome. Um, so I, you know, it, in the Quran, in uh, Surah Al-Sab, verse 59, Allah says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi r-rahman r-rahim, dhalika adna an yu'rathna wala yu'fain, which roughly translates um, that for, for women to cover themselves, for them to draw the, the covering over themselves will be better for them so that they will be known and not be troubled. So um, in the Quranic sense, the, the mode of dress is a means of identification. It's a badge. It's also a shield in a way in that it signifies you as a, as a person, as a woman of faith, as someone who has, you know, these, these strong beliefs, um, and it, it marks you out in society. At the time, my, my understanding was obviously much more superficial. Um, I saw this as, you know, this is, I, I, I was bothered by the liberal feminist perspective that freedom equals what it really comes down to full and complete erasure of a woman as anything different from a man in a way um, you're not supposed to have you know any qualms about uh, being objectified you're supposed to embrace that and find that an empowering thing and that bothered me a lot I felt like you know that that didn't seem like that was the answer to the problem of sexualization in the culture um you were supposed to kind of you know man maleness was the standard that it seemed we were all trying to rush towards and that bothered me on on a pretty deep level this idea that being feminine being female wanting to do things that are traditionally seen as feminine was somehow this this great flaw that i needed to find and like root out so hijab appealed to me on, on both of those fronts, the idea that it allows you to still be a woman and be significantly different from a man um, while still protecting that and, and not just having it, you know, open for, for consumption by whoever um, happens to choose. It puts, it's, it's taking your power back in a way. And I was just baffled that all of these so-called feminists um, didn't get that. They could see stripping naked as taking your power back, but they couldn't see rejecting nakedness in the same sense. And um, again, I found that very confusing and uh, it was kind of a, an eye-opening moment for me. And it helped me to step back from this community a little bit and realize that, you know, maybe, maybe these people don't have all the answers either. Um, which was a little depressing because I thought I had kind of maybe finally stumbled into the community where reason reigned and, you know, we could all live happily ever after having figured the world out. Um, but the reality is that's, that's, that's not where I was. I, I was far, far from there. Um, so I, uh, I did some more reflecting and, uh, I admired hijab greatly. The more I read about it, the more I learned about it, the more I admired it. I admired niqab. Um, and, you know, I went through a period of six, eight months where I wrestled with myself on how I could start doing this since I wasn't a Muslim. Would it be, you know, culturally insensitive? Would it be the equivalent of blackface? Would it be something that was going to cause more harm to this community than it was going to help me? Um, and so I decided against it and I kind of put it on the back burner. 
Um, and that's, that kind of summarizes phase one of, of my journey. That was again, the superficial kind of eye opening, um, that me and my atheist, feminist, agnostic community didn't have all the, the answers and the perfection that I had kind of hoped that we did. And, um, I, I guess it kind of kept my ears and eyes open to the next steps, which are to come in the, in this journey, in this story. So inshallah, uh, subscribe, follow along. This will be maybe a twice weekly, um, series because it kind of gets, it gets pretty philosophical <laughs> and complicated towards the later stages. Um, but, uh, you know, like our channel, subscribe. Um, also, as I said, we are currently out of the offices, out of the facilities, all of the physical projects are on hold, which is kind of a strain on the organization. We're still babies at this organization. So um, you can visit our Launch Good campaign if you would like to donate to just help us with operational costs, with adjusting to the unforeseen expenses of having to try and go online. Um, as you can see, we're recording on a cell phone. We did order a light, but that's about as far as we've gotten. Um, you can also visit our PayPal, uh, paypal.me slash Islamic Outreach CC. And uh, give what you can, follow along on the journey, and inshallah we will all gain from it. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.